We in this little museum now will try to show you your position as a human being relative to space, time, matter, and maybe a little bit of energy. Well, Ray Alf taught biology, and after he came back with his master's degree in geology, which had an emphasis on paleontology, he had to figure out a way to incorporate paleontology into his biology class. So he called it total biology, biology of the present and biology of the past. Basically, he was a tremendous motivator. He could make the most complex scientific concept exciting to young kids. He had a way, his energy, he had a way of teaching that inspired them to get really excited about science. And he could, you know, basically had him in the palm of his hand and just take him down the road of learning and they just went right along with him. He basically transformed Webb into this kind of scientific paleontological institution starting in the late 1940s that basically continues today. He was my friend, you know, and he was also a mentor in some ways because some of his methods I thought were really interesting and, you know, I started trying them out on my trips and, you know, they really worked well because Bray was a master teacher and he knew, really knew how to reach kids. Turn around here. I have a time spiral. This spiral is 50 feet long and represents just the last two billion years of Earth history. The time spiral was a... Uh, a graphic way to try to show the, uh, the length of time that the Earth has been around. And each era was a certain length on the spiral. And the key thing was that the time when, uh, for instance, vertebrates existed was very short compared to the, the length of the whole spiral. He would rub his finger along the top and pull up the dust and say, this is recorded history right here. He had a little car spring, which actually we still have. It's about nine inches tall. And it's, it looks like a tornado, kind of. And he used that for his time spiral at that time. And Millard Sheets, who designed this building, saw the time spiral and heard the story of it and decided that he'd want to design this new building that was opened in 1968. It's a round building to reflect the time spiral. So that's why it's round. I want to introduce you to my best friends. Will you please meet Betsy, Dumbo, Linda, Prudence, Richard, Sarah, Pearl, Helen, Catherine, Freddie, Bruce, Pop, and Anne. These are horses, camels, dogs, cats, rhinoceroses, pigs, elephants, mice, rabbits, you name it. This is our most abundant collection, land mammals. Well, the collection started with basically the discovery of the peccary skull, which, is, which actually was given to Caltech and uh, is now part of the L.A. County Museum collections. After the peccary was found, they started taking trips all over the western United States. And it could be, you know, local trips, California to summer trips to Wyoming, Nebraska, and South Dakota. And 95% of the fossils that are in the museum come from those trips. The collection right now is it totals about 80,000 specimens. So it's, it's a very large collection. And we have the best collection of fossil tracks and trackways anywhere in North America, probably in the world, because Ray Alf was very, very interested in collecting trackways, and nobody else was doing that, like on the scale that Webb was doing it. We dig back into a hill and expose all these bones, and then we map them, number them, put them back together, because they tell a story. When I... Uh, First came to Webb in 1991, we were, they were, had already started to drive to achieve accreditation for the American Association of Museums. It's a very difficult process because only about 4.5% of the museums in the United States are accredited. You have to basically conform to all these regulations that are professional standards. One of them is that you take very good care of your collections. So if you have 80,000 specimens that need to be accessioned, basically how they got to the museum, they have to have site information with them. And they have, a lot of them have to be cataloged. It's extremely labor-intensive. So we have this responsibility to take care of our collections, and we've been doing a great job with that. And I think accreditation will go very smoothly because you'll see that our collections are in very, very good condition. We uncover them just like this, put them back together so that everybody now can for himself or herself read that little story of a moment of time in the history of life. Sam Zamiri is from the class of 61. 
great guy. But he was a student at Webb. He was having troubles. And so they suggested try to help him out to get his, get his focus on his academics, get his focus on how to be a part of the Rinker Pays Down Homines to go on a summer trip with Ray. So he went on a summer trip with Ray as kind of a disgruntled, unmotivated student. And he came back kind of transformed. Ray Alf and the trip really had a major impact on his life, and he became a very good student and very much a Pinky Pays Down Homines type kid. And now he's uh, very, very dedicated to the museum. He loved Ray Alf, and he's been very helpful with the museum to raise money for the whole life to the Zamuri Foundation. So he's giving back to the museum and to the school for the help that, that we gave him many, many years ago. To the Hall of Life needs renovation because it's, it's old. A lot of the information's old. And so the idea is to renovate it. And most current scientific information, especially about what we're doing to contribute to scientific information here at Webb, but also to keep it in the same style Ray Alf had it. He had it as like a story. From stars to early civilization, that was his story. As you go around the circle, I think he'd be very happy to see the museum expanding and the Hall of Footprints was renovated and the Hall of Life will soon be renovated and that the kids are still really involved in the trips and they're involved in research and prepping fossils and there's a big group of kids involved in the Peccary Society that go on trips all the time and they're really enthusiastic. I think he'd be very, very pleased. He was really a mentor in a lot of ways and uh, what he did really works even today. After all is said and done, the most important thing is whatever you have in your heart. Laudate Deum.